Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about how you can start a mobile valet and business in 2023. So if you're looking at starting up a mobile valet and business in 2023, or if you've got a valet and business that you wanna to take to the next level, then this video is gonna be for you. But before I crack on with the rest of the video, please make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to the YouTube channel if you can. And also check out all of my other social medias. I'm on Instagram and TikTok as well. To start this video off, for those that are newly subscribed, let's talk about a little bit about who I am and what I do. So my name's Talisi May, and this is my business, Talisi's Detailing, which is a mobile valet and business based in Exeter. I've been running this business for about seven years. So I started off in 2016 part-time and then went full-time in 2017 when I got my own van. After I got my first car, which was a little 2002 Vauxhall Corsa, um, I just found that I was out cleaning it all the time and developed the passion for, for the valet and the detail inside of it. As time went on me keep cleaning the car, I had a lot of friends and a lot of family that were asking me to do theirs as well and then ended up building a bit of a customer base without me even realising it. So what started off as a passion for cleaning my own car, I ended up doing everyone else's as well and started actually charging a little bit for it. At the time I was actually working at Burger King which was paying my habit of cleaning products and equipment. I didn't actually realise that mobile valet was a thing at the time and it definitely wasn't popping off as much as what it was now. So after a few months of doing friends and family's cars, I ended up doing neighbours cars and then their friends cars and I ended up building a customer base out of that and then that's what's built up Talisi's Detail into what it is today. So I've now got a business out of a simple hobby for cleaning cars and in the last seven years running this business I've managed to build up a solid customer base where I've got repeat income every month and a wide range of cars that I do work on. Along the way I've also invested training into different areas to try and grow the business even bigger and even better. Now over the last seven years of running Talisi's Detail I've built up enough experience and made many mistakes that I've learned from in order to help other people along their journey to help them create a successful mobile valet business. So in 2023, I plan on bringing back Talisi D10 Academy. And with that, it's gonna be a couple of different ways that I'm gonna be looking at training people looking at get, getting in the industry. So I'm gonna be looking at bringing e-guides in, an online training platform, as well as doing the in-person practical training. Right, so let's talk about why you should start a mobile valet business and the reasons why I'm actually doing this video. So some of you who follow me on TikTok and Instagram might have seen that I've just launched an e-guide, which is my first guide into how to start up a mobile valet business from scratch. So it's for the people that are looking at starting up a valet business or have actually started up and want to take theirs to the next level. Right, so I switched it up and I'm back in the office because the weather was getting a little bit too wet, um, which is making it a nightmare to film. But let's continue with where I've left off, which I was discussing the e-guides that I've just launched. So a bit of information on the e-guide itself. So, so it's a guide to how to start a mobile valet and business. So in this guide, it covers everything from why you should get started, how to get started, what you're going to need. There's a chapter talking about the insurance, the products, pricing, how to advertise, how to get customers, what you should include on your website, a bit about terms and conditions, a bit about detail and training, and everything else that you're gonna to need to know to get you started out in this industry. Now it's a 25 page guide and it costs 60 pounds. And I know there's probably gonna be a few people that say 60 pounds is too much money for an e-guide. What you gotta look at is what sort of information you're getting out of the guide. I can guarantee that in one chapter alone, you can make that 60 pound back straight away with a little saving tip that I use in this guide. And you gotta think of sometimes what else that you'd spend 60 pounds on. People like to go out on a weekend, people like to eat out on the weekend, and you can easily spend up to 60 pounds just going out. This e-guide is seven years worth of experience that I've got and it's seven years worth of mistakes that I've had to learn from in order to put the information in this guide. And the guide's there to make sure that you learn as much information as possible and it will just help you on your journey into starting a business in the valet and industry. Rather than making the mistakes that I did, you can spend 60 pound and use this guide to get you on a better start than what I did when I started out. A few people have already bought the guide. I've had really good feedback so far, which is great. And I'm really happy that I'm helping people on their journey in the detail industry. So yeah, if you're looking at getting a guide, then the link will be down in the description below. If anyone wants any sort of sample teasers, I can always send the page um, out to you first just so you can get an idea on what it's like. But I can guarantee you will get more information on that guide than what you'll ever get anywhere online, including YouTube videos. But anyway, away from the guide, let's get started on why you should actually start a valet business if you're looking at doing so. Initially, you're going to need some sort of interest with cars, especially cleaning them. There's no point doing this job if you don't enjoy cleaning cars. But that might sound very basic, but there's some people that just see the money at the end of it and they're not too bothered about the job. But you're not going to want to carry out a career in something that you just don't enjoy doing, regardless of how much you get paid. The flip side to that is someone can really enjoy doing something, but as soon as they start getting paid for it and it's their income, they can actually lose the love for it, which is so common. So make sure there is a bit of a balance there. But obviously, number one, priority, make sure that you have some sort of interest in cleaning cars. Now, you don't have to be completely in love with cleaning cars and absolutely love cars themselves. You just need to have an interest in them. I think people get caught up in that they have to absolutely love what they do in order to pursue a career in it. Now, I have my good days and my bad days. Sometimes I love doing detailing, some days I love cars, and some days I can't stand it. 
but that's all part of it. You've got to ride the rough of this move. Just don't get caught up in the whole thing that you have to be completely in love with what you're doing in order to have a career out of it, because it's not always the case. As long as you can enjoy doing it, and it's something that you can put up with even on the bad days, and then you're on the right path. Running any sort of business is extremely rewarding and satisfying, but it's not always sunshine and rainbows. You'll have your bad days, which you need to be prepared of. Some of the benefits of running a valeting business and why you should start a valeting business are, obviously you get to work on some amazing cars, you get to meet some amazing people, and you get to visit some amazing places, especially doing the mobile side of it. It's quite a fun and rewarding job, and there's nothing better than doing something, obviously, that you get some satisfaction from. Obviously, as well, it's now my career, it's now my business, and it's something that I'll be looking at doing long term. I also think if you're interested in looking at starting a valent business, and one of the reasons why you should is because there is actually so many opportunities that you can get out of it. Some of the people I've met along the way have been absolutely amazing, and I've had doors open to me that wouldn't have been there if I wasn't doing this trade. Some other good reason of why you should start a valent business is because it's actually quite relatively easy, quite cheap to start off with. You don't need to go to college or you don't need to go to university to get yourself started as a detailer. You can easily teach yourself if you haven't got the money to pay for training, and it can be a relatively low-cost business to start up. Another reason is you can build up a strong customer base for that regular income, which is so important. But as anything, there is some negatives to having a valet in business. Now, the biggest factor that you'll find when starting a valet in business that's going to impact your income mainly will be the weather. You are dealing with the weather in this job. And in the summer, you might think it's perfect because it's nice and sunny, but that's not always ideal for detailing. You don't want it to be too hot because it can affect the paint and the chemicals, as well as obviously you don't want it to be too cold or too wet because you just won't get anything done. You might also come across some bad customers, 99% of the time that you had some really good customers, but you always get that one person that you just can't please it whatsoever. But as with any business, you're always gonna get that one person, not just in the detailing industry. Also, as with anything self-employed, the money's obviously never gonna be guaranteed. You don't know what work's gonna come in, you don't know if people are still gonna to stick to it, and obviously you can't predict the weather as well. One of the benefits of this business is that it can be recession-proof. Now, it can be seems a bit of a strong thing to say that this business can be recession proof, but if you get the right customers, it can actually be recession proof. If you can get the wealthy customers that have got that disposable income, that recession is not really gonna affect them, you can guarantee that you'll have a business throughout. So now some people do the lower end valet, which is absolutely fine, tailored to a different market. So that sort of market, if they're only looking at paying 20, 30 pounds, they're the type of people that haven't really got a lot to play with. So if a recession hit, the probably chances are they're not gonna book you because that money is a luxury to them. Whereas as much as the detailing is a luxury market, the ones who have got money will always have money. Now let's look a little bit about what you're going to need to get you started out. So this will all depend on what sort of money you've got behind you. If you've got no money behind you, it's still absolutely fine. You can look at doing things as, as, as you go along. Or if you've got a lot of money, then perfect. You'll be able to buy a lot more and get yourself started a lot quicker. The most important thing to get you started is to build up a little bit of experience cleaning cars. You can go out and buy all the equipment that you want, but if you haven't got any idea on how to clean a car, the equipment doesn't mean nothing you can end up being all the gear, no idea. So bare minimum, get yourself a pressure washer, get yourself a hoover, get yourself some brushes, and get yourself some very basic essentials to get you started, and then just literally start doing your friends and family's cars. It's the easiest way to get started. You don't necessarily need 20, 30 people to get you started out in this business. Literally, just do your mum's car, do your sister's car, do your dad's car, whoever's car that you can get, your friend, your brother, whoever it might be, do their car for free, and then start start building up experience that way. And then it doesn't matter as well if you get things wrong, it doesn't matter if you take longer time, because I'm sure they'll understand. Sometimes things can literally be right in front of you without you even realising it. So what I'd say is what you need to get you started, just get some very basic essentials, which I include in this guide, and then just start building up your experience like that. Obviously, most of you are gonna have a full-time job, so literally just do this sort of stuff in the evenings and the weekends. Like I say, in the guide, everything I'm talking about, I've included a proper chapter, explaining stuff in a bit more detail. Also include an actual basic checklist, an advanced checklist for those who haven't got a lot of money and those who have got a lot of money to get yourself started out. Now, another thing that could be an absolute minefield is looking at products. A typical person, when they get started, they'll go to Halford, they'll buy some 500ml products and they'll probably spend up to £100 buying a basic amount of products. Now, this is a really expensive way of doing it. The best way to maximise your profits is to cut down your overheads. So rather than buying 500ml products, buy 5 litre products just because it works out so much cheaper. Now, I'll let you in for a little money saving tip that's in the guide. So obviously I've printed out a paper version of the guide, but you'll be getting this on an e-guide format. So I'll probably put this up on the screen so you can see it. But what I've said in one of the paragraphs of the product section is, I recommend using a variety of different products to be more efficient and to save money. I'd recommend buying any product in a five litre format. Why, you might ask. It works out so much cheaper. Like I was saying just then, you could buy a 500ml shampoo for £12 or a five litre one for £30. You've just saved £30. 
So with buying a five litre product, you've actually saved yourself time and money. Because if you keep buying 500 mil products, you've got to keep going back to the shop every time you run out. Also, another little tip in this product section of the guide, I mentioned about getting a trade account. You can get a trade account on most detailing websites, which is normally between 10 and 15%. And these little savings do add up. So if you're getting 10% discount, if you spend £400 every month on products, obviously you'll get £40 off. £40 will go towards a couple of 5 litre products, so it just shows you what you're saving. And if you work that out on a yearly basis, you're obviously saving £480. So these little things, like the little £40 savings here and there, you can use this to invest in other areas of your business. You can put that £40 a month into something like your advertising costs. So let's talk a little bit about the mobile valet and setup. I started out from my Vauxhall Corsa, like I said earlier. I literally had a little 1.2 Vauxhall Corsa, a little free door, and I started off building up my customer base from that. You don't always need a flashy van and you don't always need a full, a full mobile valet and setup to get you started. Sometimes you can work out of the back of a car, but obviously this means you haven't got a water tank and you haven't got a generator, so it can, so it can reduce the work that you get. Because obviously with a mobile valet and setup, you could do work in people's car parks, people's workplaces, etc. So obviously working from a car, you are quite limited to what you're doing. And obviously you've got to make sure the customer's got water and electric if that's the case. But, don't be, just, but just because you see all this stuff on Instagram and social media, don't always think that you have to spend ridiculous amounts of money to get you started out. Sometimes you can start out from the very basic, and that's exactly how I started out. I didn't have any money by me, so I just had to use what I could get my hands on. But honestly, long term, it is good to look at investing into a van with a water tank and a generator. You can get it all out, you can keep everything in one place, and it just makes everything a lot easier. Obviously, my van's all sign written, it looks the part, and everyone always talks about it, which is perfect. It's just the advertisement that I need. You could take some nice photos with the van and the customer's car, and you can also use that for your social medias, which is so important. Now also, as a topic, you might be wondering, when you're first starting out, you might be doing your friends and family's cars, but you might be wondering, how do you get work outside of that? And the best way for that is to tap into the, your friends and family's network of other people that they know. So that's tagging them on social media, then getting them to share their posts, getting them to leave reviews, that their network of people in their contact list can see, and they can see what you do, and then they can get in touch with you if they're interested in the service. And sometimes it, it can come down to very basic stuff like even just going out and flyering or sending out business cards to local dealerships or local independent trade partners. Now this might seem a very old school way of doing it, but it does work and it is proven to work. Most of my customers now that have been seven years on are actually ones that I went down there with a business card or a flyer to hand out. And I'll tell you about a little story. So back when I was in my Vauxhall Corsa, I was just starting out, I was doing part-time window cleaning and then also I was doing mobile valeting a couple of days a week. Um, to boost my income. So I was doing about three days uh, window cleaning and four days mobile valeting. And obviously I wanted to do the mobile valeting full time. So I got a hold of some information that there was this independent Rolls Royce and Bentley specialist in Exeter that I never knew about. And I thought I'd just go down there and pop a business card in. Now I was quite shy and quite anxious with stuff like this. I don't really like being involved in groups of people and I don't like putting myself out there like that. So I thought I'd go down at the end of the day because I thought they might be close and I could just post a little card through the door and then they can get out the next day when they come into work. So I drove down there in the Vauxhall Corsa and I realised that the place was still open. So I went in there, sort of plucked up some courage to go in there. I had some really old business cards that I put up on the screen. They were just awful. Um, and I just said, spoke to the guy down there, he's called Paul. And I said, look, I started out some valet in work. Um, if you're ever interested in getting some bits done, then just basically give me a shout. And he took my card and he said, yeah, we use someone at the minute, but we'll give you a shout as and when sort of thing. Probably a week or two weeks later, I had a phone call saying we've got this Rolls Royce or Bentley or whatever it was, do you want to come down and clean it? And then that's how I built up the relationship. And seven years on, I've been doing a car for them probably at least once every two months. So sometimes you've got to put yourself out there and, some, and sometimes you just need to do these old traditional ways of advertising because it can pay off. Some people, especially in your area, like the personal feel, if you go down and have a conversation with someone, if you go down to your local parts places or dealerships, you can go down there and basically sell yourself and then tell them what you do rather than just sending them an email um, a little bit about it. It can be quite uncomfortable. Sometimes you will get turned down. Sometimes people will say no, but it's all part of the process. I talk a lot in the guide about getting work through social media. So I'm going to leave that for the guide for those that are interested in that. But what I would say is social media is free. Utilise it as much as you possibly can. Do stories, do videos, do whatever you need to do to get yourself out there because that's what I'm currently doing at the minute. It can be quite painful sometimes, especially when you go through all the effort of making videos or obviously worrying about what people think, but sometimes you just got to do it. At the end of the day, it's going to benefit your business, so why not just do it? Now, as well as obviously advertising, business cards, flyering and social media, it's also handy to have a website, which you can link a Google account to as well. 
people like going to a website, they like seeing the services, they like seeing a gallery, and they like seeing the reviews um, from anyone that's had work done by you before. You don't have to spend thousands getting a website done. Sometimes you can make your own website, which might not be as good, but something's better than nothing. Like I say, sometimes you don't have to spend ridiculous amounts of money. Sometimes you just need the basics and then work your way up from that. Everyone's got to start from the bottom. And I wouldn't class myself as at the top, but if you're looking at me and going, oh, well, he's got a van, he's got all this customer base, X, Y, and Z, obviously I've had to start off from nothing. And this is where I've got to. And all you need to do is work really hard and give 100% even when you don't feel like doing it. Also in the guide, I've got a section on pricing, payments and invoicing. Pricing is one of the areas where I completely messed up probably for the first three years running my business. And this is an area you need to make sure that you get right from day one. Now I've got a lot of information in the guide about this, which will benefit you massively and save you an absolute fortune down the long run. But what I'd say to anyone starting, looking at starting a valet business this year, prices of everything are really high. Fuel's high, products are high, labour's high. Cost of everything is just ridiculous. So make sure you are not undercutting anyone. What I was doing when I first started out was looking at other people doing mobile valet in the area and sort of undercutting their prices. These days, you can't really do that because you'll just end up losing an absolute fortune. My prices at the minute are probably the max to what I can charge and I'm still probably swallowing some of the, some of the rising living costs. So whatever you do, don't get a really basic price list done first to make sure the price list is something that you could be happy with in two three years time now obviously prices are going to change in two three years due to inflation so you will have to look at changing your prices in the long term but just make sure you don't charge ridiculously low to begin with because it's just not going to do you any favors the whole point of business as well as enjoying valet and you've got to make money you've got to keep a roof over your head you've got to pay the bills and you've got to make sure that you're paying for everything else and you've obviously got to make sure that you're making some money for yourself now obviously in the first couple of years you don't necessarily always make money you might break even you might make a little bit or you might, might make a loss so this is why it's essential to keep your costs down and make sure and make sure the pricing costs are at a good level where you can make some money what i'd say to anyone starting out is start with some very basic services make sure you've got experience in them areas before, before you start advertising it on customers cars you might have a, a long you might have a long-term plan of looking at doing the more detail inside of it. You might even look at be doing PPF and all the rest of the stuff that comes in the car industry. But if you're looking at valet and specifically, just make sure that you nail that area first before you move on to the next thing. Make sure that you're a sick valeter before you become a detailer. Because there's nothing worse than seeing someone who thinks that they can machine polish, but they don't even know how to clean a car properly and even to get it to some sort of decent prep to polish. So make sure before you look at even looking at doing the next step, you've completely nailed the first one with whatever that is. What I'd say as well is if you're completely new, utilize some pre-training sources like YouTube and different forums that are on Facebook. I highly recommend stuff like Detailer Network and Detailer UK on Facebook. I also highly recommend some YouTube channels such as Epic Car Show who has some really good detailed, excuse the pun, detailing videos. It includes how-tos, tips and tricks and all that sort of stuff. So well worth checking that out. Obviously, utilizing social media and YouTube for training, obviously you don't have to pay any money. It's free advice. It's free advice so you can, you can take it how you want. Obviously, other areas of training and stuff like e-guides, practical training and online platforms as well. Obviously, I've got my e-guide into how to start in a valet business. Also this year, looking at, looking at developing an online training platform with a close friend of mine. That's going to be a video-based training platform and it's going to include loads of different training videos and loads of different areas in detailing. We've already recorded a year or so ago a beginner's guide to cleaning the car and a beginner's guide to cleaning the car's interior. They are in the process of being edited and published and hopefully these will be on an online platform soon. If you're looking at any sort of online training platform, if you want to get a bit more information on the guides as well, I have got a register interest section on the website where we can send you out any information as it comes. Obviously, the first e-guide is already out there, but it might be worth registering your interest for any more that might come out. And obviously then you'll get to know about the online training platform that we'll be looking at doing very soon. But I think I've covered most of the areas where people ask questions. I've included a few of the chapters that I've included in my first guide. Now, obviously, if anyone's got any more questions about anything, then please leave them down in the comments below. And I can always do another video on this as and when. Obviously, if you're interested in learning a bit more about how to start a ballot in business, then I do, I do highly recommend purchasing the guide. I know I'm going to say that because obviously it's my guide, but I do really think it's going to benefit, benefit some of you. Some of the stuff in there you just won't ever learn online. And obviously, I've got experience in the industry. I've done the seven years. I've learned the mistakes that you don't need to. And everything in there is going to benefit you. Because I said earlier, that'll be one of the best £60 investments that you'll make into your business. Looking at launch, relaunching Talisy's Detailing Training Academy this year. So that is the practical side of the detailing training. So what I'm going to do as well is the next 30 people, and this will include the people that have already copped the guide already, 
is you'll be getting 10% off any practical training. So if you buy the guide and you want to look at doing some practical training, you get 10% off any training that I look at doing in the future. So for these first 30 people that bought the guide, so I'll be looking at doing a Zoom call with 10 of you on at a time. So I'll be doing three Zoom calls, 10 in a group, and then we'll be discussing any questions that you might have into how to start a valet business and we'll be bouncing off ideas off each other, which will last about an hour and a half per call. Anyone who's looking to get the guide, I'd get one as soon as, because you could be you could be one of the people that get discount on the training, as obviously as well as being entered into the free Zoom call, um, which would be like a business masterclass. Obviously, if you haven't got the money for the guide or if you haven't got the money for any training, utilise what you can find on social media, mainly YouTube, because obviously you can get a lot out of that. I'm interested to see where some of you could take your businesses in 2023. I get a lot of questions all the time. I tend to get back to as many people as possible, but sometimes obviously it can be a bit hard. But I'm looking forward to seeing who I can help on their journey this year. And I'm, and I'm looking forward to seeing where you take your business in 2023. Like I said, the detail industry is a really good industry to get into. It is a relatively new industry, which is always adapting and always changing, which makes it quite exciting. So look, I hope this video has helped some of you guys out. And like I say, any information that you need on anything, please do send me a message or leave a comment down below. And thanks in advance to those that are looking at purchasing the guide. I'll put any links down below for anything I've mentioned. So if you want to register interest for the online training platform, that will be in the description below. Obviously, please make sure you give this video a like, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and let me know any future video ideas you'd like to see in 2023. So yeah, that's that. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you guys and girls in the next one. Ciao.